Hello. This is the second of two videos demonstrating the new OpenWire Visual Live Bindings technology that's now available for download as a beta technology preview from metov.com. In the first video, we explain the basics of the OpenWire Visual Live Bindings and that the binding manager, the OpenWire Pin Binding Manager, reflects over all the components on a form, whether it's a VCL form or a Fire, Fire Monkey form, and allows you to add pins to the object inspector representing properties or events for each component. And then you can connect a source pin to a sync pin, for instance, using the OpenWire editor technology, and thereby transmit signals and logic throughout your application. The first video demonstrated the basics of how to launch the binding manager, the pin binding editor, and create pins and connect them. In this demonstration, we're going to focus on building a simple database application to show you some special pins for data sets and some other aspects of building an application like this. To save time, I've created a FireMonkey HD application and dropped all the components I need on the form here you see a client data set in the center of the form here, and a string grid where the raw data from the data set are going to appear, a bind navigator to navigate through the records, a couple of buttons to do uh, back and forth navigation just to show you how you might you do that if you did not want to use binding navigator, and some other controls that we're going to display various um, fields from the data set for the selected record. And now we're going to add some pins to the client data set. Uh, bind manager by selecting new visual light binding. Okay, the client data set is open here. We're going to set that as a data set source by adding a data set source pin. You can see that the icon was added there. That takes care of the client data set. The string, get, string grid is going to be a sync, data set sync pin. And the bind navigator is going to be connected to that same source by adding a sync pin there. So that takes care of the data set. Now we wanted to connect that common name field. This is the common name field of this data set and we'll double click on string state pin and add a state pin there. Now that's the state of that field, the common name, it's going to be shared with the edit, this edit one here, specifically its text property. So we'll add another string state pin there. And the common name is also going to be shared with the text control and the text property of that control. So we added a pin there. So that takes care of adding our pins. We added roughly half a dozen pins. Let's go look at our open wire editor to see what pins were added. Again, we have a client data set pin. that we want connected to the string grid and the bind navigator. So we'll just connect those compatible pins. As you recall from the first video, I hope you watched that, that the compatible pins are highlighted when you connect, when you click on a source pin, the compatible sync pins are highlighted. And the common name field we want displayed in that text control which is a graphic control and we also want it displayed in the edit box. Now notice the state dispatcher symbol I'm dragging right now. The state dispatcher was created so that these two controls specifically their text property shares the same state so that when you edit the text in this edit box the database state will change as will the state of this text control and that takes care of it. Let's run our application. Okay. We 
we connected that state pin for the common name to this text shape here. So that is being updated. And the text value for the edit, the T edit input is being changed as we navigate. Now let's edit this. Let's say in, instead of anglefish, it should have been anglerfish. Excuse me, instead of angelfish. We edit, as, you, as we edit it, you see that the data set is changed as reflected in the string grid and the text control is changed. Let's put it back the way it was. Okay. Now we have some functionality we're going to add. We want to be able to hide this edit box and its label when we change this. Right now that's not enabled. We want to display a graphic. There's a graphic field which is a picture of the fish here in this image control and as a surface on this 3D cube. And we'd like this memo field to be displayed in this uh, memo here for editing. In addition, we'd also like to be able to navigate with these buttons and display the record number and the total records here with these labels. Lastly, as we cruise through the records, they have different length values, 50 centimeters, 229, and so on. We'd like this ellipse here to change its width corresponding to the length of that uh, record. In order to do all that, we'll have to add pins to all these components and then wire them up. To save time, I'm going to load the finished application and show you the, the wiring diagram for that application. We just built this simple one here. I'm going to close this application. Okay, I've opened the finished application and switched to the open wire tab here to show the open wire diagram, the open wire editor diagram for this application. Now each of these components is a standard FireMonkey component. Button 1, T button, button 2, T memo, T ellipse, T text, which is a shape, T edit, checkbox, and so on. Here's our client data set with four fields nested within it. The by navigator string grid from the previous demo. Uh, another label, set of labels, and uh, image control in the viewport on our 3D round cube. And we added pins uh, for each of the properties that we wanted to connect. When we click the button with the less than sign on it, it's going to call the next function of client data set. When we click the greater than button, it'll call prior and so on. The memo line state pin is connected to the state pin of the notes field. The ellipse width field state pin is connected to the length in centimeters of that record. And the text state pin is connected to the common name. Oh, we did that previously. In addition, the, these edit box and label where we edit the common name is going to be hidden if we uncheck this checkbox. So the is checked state pin, which we added, is connected to the uh, is visible, or excuse me, the visible property of the label and the edit. And lastly, we connected the graphic pin. That's a special pin. I'll show you that shortly. Uh, to the image control and to the round cube. So let's look at our design time form. You can see that it's reflected at design time and we'll run it. Now we can navigate using these buttons. You can see that as I click the button, it advances the row. This memo text here can be edited. For instance, habitat, let's put a grammatical mistake in here, habitat R. And you can see as I advance to the next field and then come back, that change is per persisted there. Let's put it back. 
and again the image is wrapped as a surface on this uh, round rectangle, excuse me, round cube. And the length field, length in centimeters, is reflected in the width of this ellipse because we connected the pins for uh, length state to the width state of the ellipse. You can see the width changing there as we go through the rows. And lastly, let's say we want to edit the common name. We need to make those visible. We'll check this. And because it's visible, excuse me, check this. Because it's visible pin is connected to the visible property pin of these this control, we can edit this here. Okay, that completes this demonstration. Let's take a look at one particular pin, and that was the stream persist pin. Okay. You can see the image control has a bitmap property, and we've added a stream persist sync pin. That's a sync pin because it's to the image control, and it's coming from the client data set. So we just go down here to look at the graphic field. We click on that. It's got a stream persist source pin. That completes this demonstration. I, again, this is a beta preview version. Um, and we'll be improving it over the coming weeks. Thank you.